I will be combining days one and two since they are two parts of the same travel experience. Half of us will leave from Jackson, fly to Houston, Texas, and then fly from there to Newark. The other half will leave New Orleans and fly to Newark, and then we'll all fly internationally together. We we'll leave home in the middle of the morning, headed to the Jackson Airport. There we will meet Linda Little Malone and travel with her the rest of the time. At noon, we'll be heading to Houston. And here comes our airplane now. After it's pulled into its slot and offloaded, it's time for us to head down the jetway and to get on board. We'll be flying on an Ember Air 145, and then it's time to take off for Houston. Once in the air over Jackson, it'll be a fairly short flight, only a couple of hours, mainly up and then down again. They serve us a few refreshments and snacks, and then we look out the window as we fly over Louisiana. Soon we're in Texas, and that's Houston below. We can see the city skyline in the distance, and then we're on the ground in Houston. Our first leg of our flight completed. We'll be pulling into Terminal A and we have to take the Skyway over to Terminal C to catch our next flight. And off Deborah the Explorer heads to the Skyway. Soon it's coming our way and we're ready to get on board and head out. We make it to our gate just fine and rest a little bit in the airport. And then here comes our plane in and it'll be time for us to get on board very soon. Well, I hope that you are as ready as I am. Soon we will be in Newark and you will be getting ready to head to the Holy Land. I hear that the weather is supposed to be very clear as you go over Europe tomorrow morning, so you should be able to see for miles and miles. I bet there will be some fantastic sights to see. I will let my big brother know that you like smooth flights and good landings. Have a wonderful rest of the day and we will soon be taking off and heading east. With those reassuring words from our Airbus 320, we get on board, find our seats, and it's time to head out again. This time a four hour flight to Newark, flying right back over Jackson, Mississippi. Makes you wonder why we didn't go direct. Four hours 
hours later, we're over Newark and we're heading in for a landing. Newark Airport is fairly large and so we head to our gate that we'll be leaving from and wait for the rest of the group. It seems that they're having a little bit of a trouble getting out of New Orleans. Somebody called President Trump is landing. But they do make it just fine, and now it's time to get our badges on and get ready for our traveling experience, as we're all together now, and flying to Tel Aviv in the not too distant future, as it starts to get dark and new. We'll be flying on a Boeing 777-300, lots of seats, small space, and we'll be scattered all over the cabin, so we will not be sitting together. And it looks like the Orthodox Jews are also putting their things up and getting ready to go. We settle in and get ready to fly. It's nightfall when we leave. 5,691 miles and about 10 hours of travel time to get there and we take off over the lights of Newark. Soon we enter the clouds and can't see anymore as we fly on across the Atlantic. Three hours later as we're flying 667 miles an hour, seven miles over the Atlantic at a minus 56 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere over the Atlantic, the sun comes up and day two starts. As it gets brighter, the passengers start to stir, especially the Orthodox Jews, as they put on their phylacteries and prayer shells and have their morning prayers. They'll be facing the front of the airplane, for that's where the Temple Mount would be. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. As we fly on over the Atlantic, the cloud cover is very dense. But then as we reach Europe and the French coast, it clears up and we start to see the land below. Let's just sit back and watch the land unfold as we cross over Europe.
Soon we're approaching the Alp Mountains and it is going to be spectacular. Then on into northern Italy. And there below us? Why, that's Turk. Clouds come back over the Adriatic Sea, but then they disappear again as we cross the Croatian coast. Again, it clouds up over the Aegean Sea, but then clears as we head over Turkey. They are just finishing up the wheat harvest, so the fields look brown right now, mostly. Irrigation from this dam makes a huge difference as you can see from this fields. As we move into southeastern Turkey we can see the desert and its many colors but also can see how irrigation can grow crops here if they can find water. And then we cross over a small section of the Mediterranean and there's Tel Aviv, the modern city in Israel. Tel Aviv is modern, really only a hundred years old. There was nothing here about a hundred years ago. And as you can see now, it has grown up with many suburbs and other things here on the coastal plain. And as we fly over, we start really our tour where you're looking at the coastal plain. Here we can see fruit trees being grown. This is the area that the Philistines dominated during David's time. It's a whole lot like the Delta area of Mississippi and that is flat and can grow crops. At one time it was swampy and through here runs the major highway of the world, the Via Maris.
As we can see from the air, they have just harvested their winter wheat crop, and now as we follow the airplane shadow, we get closer and closer to the ground, ready to land. We'll be landing in load, where the Binguran Airport is. And then welcome to Israel and the Holy Land. We have arrived at Ben Gurion Airport. It is actually a relatively small airport and doesn't have a very big terminal, but handles mainly international flights to and from Israel. As we head down the ramp towards Immigration and Customs, we see some of the mosaic floors that were found in the area as they were building the airport. You dig somewhere in Israel and you're going to find something antiquity. -wise. As soon as we get our luggage, it's time to leave the airport. We'll be taking this route north as we head toward Tiberias where we will spend the night. Our bus while we are here will be a modern motor coach, very comfortable, with even USB plug-ins for our cell phone charging. And we're on the blue bus. We get on the bus and we start to listen. N-A-S-R-I, Nasri, Nasri, whatever you can pronounce, but um, he's the most important person on the bus, and both of us came from Jerusalem. I'm your guide, and my name is also difficult for Americans to pronounce because it has the Ch sound, and so many of the names have Chana. So if you cannot pronounce Chana, it's okay, Hana, Anna, and these are all the same names. Of course, a biblical name. It was Hannah, she was the mother of the prophet Samuel. And I do have four sons, didn't name any of them, Samuel. Both of us are from Jerusalem, so we travel from Jerusalem here to the airport. It's only about 50 minutes to an hour. Another important person is Karim Baruch. She's our bus captain. She's a United Methodist pastor from the United States and a fellow traveler. But she's responsible for our worship services, for liaising with the guide, and for making sure that Alan Deering doesn't stop too many times to take pictures, but stays up with the group. So she has to go last, and that's a hard job. And we're now we head out across the coastal plain. So we head toward Tiberias. It'll get dark before we get to the Mount Carmel range. Soon it's starting to get darker and we continue to drive on through Wadi Ara. We'll be back through here tomorrow. The places we literally cross through the Carmel Range, through tunnels that is, but we don't get to see a whole lot sometimes. We'll be staying in the Leonardo Club Hotel in Tiberias, but it's dark when we arrive and we don't really get to look around a lot. We eat supper and head to our rooms to get some rest after our long trip. But we're right on the Sea of Galilee. And this brings us to the end of day one and two.